Sure, so I'm Dr. Holly Krieger. I'm a lecturer here at the University of Cambridge in pure mathematics, and I'm also a fellow and director of studies at Murray Edwards College. And can you give us an example of the area of mathematics you work in? Yeah, so I work in what's called complex dynamics, which is um, a particular subset of the study of dynamical systems. So first let me tell you what a dynamical system is. <laughs> so a dynamical system is one which is defined by maybe a simple rule, and what a dynamicist tries to understand is what happens under repeated application of this rule. So you should think of, here's sort of a toy example, is if you have, I'll just do a completely abstract one, is if you have a circle and you rotate that circle by some angle, right? A dynamicist would ask, well, what happens if you rotate it by that angle over and over and over again? Do you, say, get back where you started? Sometimes that will happen if you had rotated it by half the way around, for example. Or do you never get back where you started, which also can happen. And so understanding long-term behavior of systems, which are defined by these really straightforward rules, is what a dynamicist does. And as a complex dynamicist, what I do is I study these sort of idealized versions of these things, which are, OK, instead of trying to work in mes messy physical scenarios, let's take a really sort of pure mathematical model of these kinds of systems, see how they behave in the hopes that that can then be applied to the more realistic scenarios. So what sort of mathematics is involved that students might have heard about? So I think what students might have heard about that is probably the most involved in the study of complex dynamical systems is complex numbers. Um, so one of the ways in which this comes up is if you're thinking about um, a dynamical system which is defined by a quadratic, for example. One of the things you might want to ask is whether or not a point comes back to itself after application of this system. And that's essentially the same thing in some cases as solving a quadratic equation. And one of the things we know about quadratic equations is that over the real numbers, they don't always have solutions, right? So sometimes they have two solutions, sometimes they have one solution, sometimes zero. And this is something that you can compute just by looking at the quadratic equation. But for a dynamicist, you really need solutions. <laughs> and so going into the complex numbers is how you actually guarantee, oh, this quadratic equation does have maybe complex solutions. And so then, in fact, I can study the dynamical system using the complex numbers. Could you tell us a little bit more about your area? Yeah, so I study actually collections of dynamical systems and how sensitive a dynamical system is to the initial conditions of the system. So trying to understand the long-term behavior, if I change all of the parameters just a little bit, does the long-term behavior change? That's kind of what I study. And some of the sort of nice geometric objects that come up in this, for example, are fractals or the Mandelbrot set, which you might have also heard of. Um, particularly for quadratic dynamical systems, we see all of these features already. And so I study, in some sense, the geometry of the objects and the arithmetic of the objects that arise in families of complex dynamical systems.